Hey, what's up everybody? This is Leroy and welcome to my channel, 40 and Broke, where we're all about getting out of debt, saving, investing, and getting our finances under control so we can live the life we've always dreamed of. Because that's what it's all about, living the life we've always dreamed of. So I wanted to come on here. I'm at work. I'm just sitting here making another video because you know what? That's what we do. And I wanted to talk about what prison taught me about problem solving. So when you're in prison, obviously you have a lot of problems. So what are some of those problems? You don't have access to the things that you have out here. Things that you and I would out here would take for granted. You don't have access to that. So like when I was in level five, you sit in your cell, you have no way to heat up your food. You want a cup of coffee? At best, you're gonna have lukewarm water for some instant coffee. So how do you heat up your coffee? If you're making something to eat, you know, like a ramen noodle soup with some cheese and stuff, how do you heat up the food? So what did they do? They found a way to adapt and overcome. They make what is known as a stinger. Now a stinger was just, it was a piece of metal that basically an electrical cord plugged into Imagine, let's say a pair of nail clippers. People would do, people made some real fancy ones, but you would take, say, a quick pair would be a pair of nail clippers, you pop them apart, they'd be in two pieces. You take uh, an electrical cord, you cut it, you pull the strings apart, you, you know, strip the wire, wrap the wire around one side of the, uh, the cord, or the nail clipper, wrap the wire around the other side, Put something in between them that was non-conductive, wrap the two together, fill up your garbage can full of water, throw the uh, throw the, the stinger into the water, plug it in, and boom, it would start boiling the water. The electrical current would boil the water. Now, don't put your finger in there because uh, it'll zap you. But uh, then you would take, say if you were cooking, you'd put all your food in a little garbage bag your noodles, your water, whatever, you put it in a garbage bag, tie it up, and you just hang it over the side of the, uh, the trash can and in the water, and then it would boil, and there you go. Pretty soon it would, it would heat up your food, and it'd cook your meal, and then you just open up. You could add your cheese, your meat stick, everything, cook it back up, put it back in there, let that cheese melt, bing, bang, boom. Do the same thing with your coffee. You get a bag of water, put the water in the uh, the trash can, let the water heat up, pour it into your cup, boom, hot coffee. So that was one thing they had to do. They had to adapt and overcome and make stuff just to heat up their food. So, you know, and like I said, you get a lot of people, they were real ingenious about it. They tear apart batteries. I never really made a stinger. You know, I always just paid somebody to make one for me, but they would tear apart the batteries and inside the batteries there'd be like this I don't know graphic or not graphic graphite like electrode or something like that and they you'd have the, the the cap like you know like a big pen like here's the cap but it's got the hole in the top of it so they would stick that electrode in there along with the wires and then they'd wrap it and they they really good job I don't know how they did a lot of it but so they would take a stinger and that's how you would use to heat up your food another thing you'd have to do is how to fix things so it's not like you have a toolkit in your cell and the problem is if something breaks it's considered uh, altered so it would be altered or affected somehow. So instead of being able to fix it, you either had to send it out and have somebody fix it and then have it sent back in, which usually cost more than it was worth, or you had to just buy a new one. So, you know, if, let's say your t something happens with your TV, but you know how to fix it, it's, um, way easier to just fix it yourself but you don't have tools so what do you do so a lot of the things 
you would do is you would make your own tools out of staples like if you were when I worked in the kitchen they would have these copper staples that came in like boxes of apples or other fruit but they're just a heavy duty thick anybody that works in any sort of retail or you know like a grocery store probably knows what I'm talking about those big heavy duty thick staples well you take those melt it into an ink pen now you got a screwdriver you know you sharpen it down a little bit now you got a scraper so I seen people that had made uh, what do you call them the oh man they're those guns uh, solder guns so they would fix TVs by scraping solder off junk parts saving the solder and then making a solder gun in order to fix a TV so I mean there were so many ways to make tools I remember one time I sold a guy a TV and I turned around and I took my I or I bought a new TV when they let us get color TVs and I, I gave a guy my old TV so I had to they would engrave your prison number into it well what they did at Marquette level 5 is they literally melted your number into it so it was melted in pretty good so I had to scrape my number out fill that in with melted plastic and then burn his number into it and we paid an officer to take that TV up to him and uh, that got that officer looked at that the the number job that I did and he was like that was a pretty good number job you know he's like you did a pretty good job putting that guy taking your number out and putting that guy's number in well what I had to do was I mean it was like a brown brown on one side gray on the other so not only did I have to melt it out but then I had to kind of like paint it so that everything looked you know like it wasn't altered and he ended up it ended up getting taken from him but they couldn't proved that I gave it to him you know but a little while later he ended up losing the TV because just because another officer didn't like him and walked in there and was like there's no way you got enough money to buy a TV because you don't have nothing this was given to you yeah this was altered so since he didn't have the paperwork they said it was altered so you know I mean that's yeah, that's just what it is prison lifestyle there but so then now, here, here's a bit of ingenuity. I had a buddy that worked in the <laughs> worked in the kitchen. So he decided one day that you know prison wasn't for him. So he wanted to break out. So he had found a blind spot where there weren't no cameras, and so so he was sitting there and he's like, okay, how am I going to get over the wall? Because this prison had a wall. And he's like, how am I going to get over this wall? Well, he's like, watching TV, was watching the Discovery Channel and seeing some Neanderthals braiding a rope. And he's like, I'll braid a rope. So he made a rope. He braided a rope, wrapped it around himself, made it from his cell block to the kitchen without getting shook down. And at the facility he was in, that was like the gods had to intervene the stars align the universe just be in harmony in order to go that much of a distance he said without even getting shook down shook down once let alone not twice so he said he made it that far and he said it was just he don't know how he did it so he got there was out on break managed to get to where he was at where that blind spot was threw the rope up over, got it over, was getting ready to climb up, couldn't pull himself up, couldn't lift himself up, and I was like, he was like, man, and <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I guess, he's like, that's when I decided I needed to work out, because I can't even climb up a rope so that was like a, a running joke with him I'm, he's like he's always be like I'll whoop your ass I'm like dude you can't even pull yourself up a rope how you gonna you know how you gonna whoop my ass and uh, but I mean there was there were so many the the ingenuity 
in prison that I seen was just, I mean, crazy. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a little bit of it. I've got a, another video that I was thinking of doing about just the talent that's in prison. Well, one of the things that we would do is the you would buy in order to do tattoos. I've got a bunch of prison tattoos. Well, where do you get the ink? You can't use ink out of a regular ink pen. I mean, that's uh, it's toxic, so you can't do that. You know, it'll. I mean, it's not going to kill you, but it'll mess up your skin or whatever. So, but what people would do is I've seen people burn cardboard paper whatever carbon paper because it's black you know so you get that dark ink and they would make an ash and they would take the ashes crumble them all up put it in a little bit of shampoo stir it up or some some other water-based um liquid that to make like a paste and then just dip it and do the tattoo and there's another one uh badger it was a fabric ink and in order to make this fabric ink so that you could turn it into tattoo ink you would you would buy it and then you'd have to let it sit and you can't let it shake up so it would sit for about i don't know a week two weeks a month and it would cause the pigment and there was this clear liquid and it would separate. All your pigments would settle and that clear liquid would separate and then you'd wick it out with a piece of toilet paper. And then you let it sit and you just keep wicking that out. And then you, and then the next trick was you put it in the microwave, zap it for about 10 seconds, let some heat get on it and then let it sit again for a few more days and then it would cause another separation and you'd wick that out again, you'd get a super black ink. And it's like, I don't know how people come up with this stuff, but this is the stuff they learn. And it's just, it's just crazy, the ingenuity in prison. I mean, it's like they say that, uh, uh, what's that? Adversity is the mother of ingenuity. So, I mean, Prison is, I guess, the epitome of adversity. You need to adapt and overcome. If you want to have creature comforts and be able to do normal, small things, then you have to learn to adapt and overcome. You have to use what you have at hand. And it's the same thing out here. You know, it's like, I don't have, I don't have a skill. Well, you have to use what you have at hand. What do you have at hand? We've got the internet. We've got books. We've got live, you know, you've got libraries. You've got everything go figure out talk to people you know there are so many people that will give you just little bits of knowledge and then you just learn to put it all together so that's what it is there's my little bit of a story on uh, prison ingenuity and all right everybody have a good one keep hustling all that good stuff and have a great day